Hey YouTube, it's me, Eye Addiction, and today it's going to be a little bit different kind of a video because I'm actually making bread. As you can see from all the ingredients in front of me, we have pretty much everything it takes to make basic white bread. I'm actually using the KitchenAid basic guide that came with my KitchenAid to try out their recipe for basic white bread. I will post this in the description below if you want to try along, but uh, I'm also going to talk about what the instructions tell me to do. It's going to be kind of a boring video, but my brother's really big into bread, my uncle's really big into bread, and I want to start making bread, so I thought, why not make a video about it? So today we're going to be talking about basic white bread. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I originally put all the ingredients into this cup, and then I was going to pour them into the saucepan over the stove to make it a little bit easier. But to be honest, you really can't actually do that because all of the, the, the sticky ingredients, like the salt and sugar, stick to the pan, or well, to the side of here. So, we're, this is actually take two. Uh, I originally wasn't actually going to show me pouring the uh, ingredients, but I figured this would be a great way to show you guys um, a safe and effective way that at least worked the first time for me. Now I say that, so here we go. So the very first thing it says is place milk, sugar, salt, and butter in a small saucepan. Heat over low heat until butter melts and sugar dissolves. Cool to lukewarm. So the first thing they ask for is the milk. I need one half cup of low fat milk. So I have low fat milk here, it's 1%, and you could probably use 2% and get away with it, but we drink 1%. And I'm gonna pour it into here, just in case I make a mistake, it's not gonna go into the saucepan just yet. This is a half cup, and we're gonna pour it. I'm pretty good with milk, I did this before and it didn't have any problems. I'm gonna pour it directly over, just in case, get it as close as possible to the rim, and then pour it into here. Now this milk is cold, so doing it first is going to give it a little bit of time to actually cool down. Let's put the milk back in the fridge. And uh, I, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pour the ingredients first, and then I'm going to put them all in, just so that we don't have any issues. So the first thing is milk. The second is sugar. I am using just basic domino sugar. I did pour it into this so that when I'm not using it, it's going to stay really uh, you know, uh, airtight. So again, I'm gonna have this container and I'm gonna pour the sugar into here. It asks for three tablespoons of sugar, not teaspoons. There is a tablespoon and a teaspoon. The tablespoon is of course bigger. So we're gonna use three tablespoons of sugar. Uh, and the way that I like to do this, and again, it worked very well the last time, I'll use a uh, measuring cup that I'm not using and use the end of it. And I will just scrape it off like this over the top so that I don't get any excess. So I'm going to do a heaping spoon and then pull it off like this. And again, it seems to work well. So there's one. Do this again. Heaping. There's two. And we need three tablespoons. So we'll do it one more time. Three. I mean, it's as exact as it's probably going to get. I'm going to close this up just so that I can keep this super airtight. I'm going to put this back over by the sugar. And again, I'm going to put this next to the sugar just so that I know that that's the ingredient that I'm using. Next up is salt. Salt's a little bit trickier to be honest because I don't actually want to pour the salt over it because this is going to be hard to use. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use the measuring cup and I'll probably just wash this out afterwards if I need to measure anything in here, which I really don't think I'm going to need to. But that calls for two teaspoons of sugar or salt. So I'm going to use the teaspoon one, and again, I'm going to put this very close, and then I'm going to pour over this. I'm going to probably lose a lot of salt because I'm not really going to be able to save this. But salt's so cheap, it really doesn't matter. So again, this is not rocket science, but there's one, and I need to do that one more time. There might be a better way to do this that I just don't know about. There's two. Okay. So again, I did waste a little bit. I could probably pour that back in, but I'm not super worried about it. So I'll just throw it away. All right. So now we have the salt. Last but certainly not least, it wants the butter. I'm using salted butter, which is probably not a good idea, but this is all I had at home. I didn't realize that it was salted. Uh, but I'm just going to use a basic knife to cut it. It needs three tablespoons of butter, or you could use margarine if you want to be healthier. So I'll start with one, two, and three. 
I'm going to try to get this as close as possible. I'll cut this. And it started going sideways, so let's try that one more time. There we go. That's pretty close. Again, I'm sure it doesn't have to be exact, exact science, but as close as possible is never a bad idea. So we have the butter right here. I'm going to set that sideways. I'm going to put this back into the fridge so that it doesn't go bad. And now we have all of our ingredients. Just to make sure, we need milk, sugar, salt, and butter in a small saucepan. We have our small saucepan. The first thing that I'm gonna pour in is the milk. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. So we have our milk. Next up is the sugar. Then the salt. and the butter. So again, we just pop the butter right in here. Now, the next segment, I'm gonna go over to my stove and we're gonna heat this up to lukewarm temperature. All right, so now as you can see, we are in front of my gas stove. I'm just gonna get it started. I'm gonna put it on a very, very low flame. I love gas stoves, by the way. I, I probably someday will not be, have the joy of having a gas stove, but Right now I do, so I'm very lucky. I'm not a huge fan of electric. I don't know, just something about cooking over a flame has always been a fan of me. So it just says that we should heat over low until butter melts and sugar dissolves, cool to lukewarm. So I am using uh, my old pans. I, we just got Cathlon full stainless steel pans, but we actually haven't gotten them yet. We have to pick them up. So I'm just gonna lightly braise this just to make sure that it continues to move so that nothing you know, boils or nothing uh, you know, sticks. So we just basically have to wait for the butter to melt. And again, it is something that I'm doing on a very, very low setting. To be honest, it might be too low of a setting. I don't know. But I figure the lower the setting, the better. So I, I have the flame pretty low. So I'm going to continue to stir this until it is totally dissolved. So as you can see, my piece of butter is becoming smaller and smaller. It's almost completely dissolved. I'll give this probably a stir for another 20 seconds or so, and it should be ready to actually start cooling down. Not that it's going to be boiling or anything like that, but they do want it at a lukewarm temperature. So again, the butter is almost fully dissolved. As a matter of fact, it might already be. I'm just checking one more time. Give it a quick stir. And I'm going to turn this off and let it cool because the butter is now actually fully dissolved. So I'm going to turn the heat all the way off and I'm going to allow this to cool to, luke, to room temperature or in the eyes of this, lukewarm temperature. Alright, my next step says to dissolve yeast in warm water in warm mixer bowl. Add lukewarm milk mixture and 1 fourth cups flour. So this is actually water directly from my fridge. I did read some reviews online about making bread and they said using a filtered water is not a bad idea. I have a zero water filter, but of course this is very, very cold. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to warm this water up. I'm probably just gonna throw it into the microwave for a couple of minutes, like a 20 to 30 seconds just to get it uh, warm, not hot, not boiling, but warm. And then what I'll probably do is I will put this I will put the water into here and warm the bowl up as well because it wants the bowl to be warmed mixer bowl. So again, we have to dissolve the yeast in warm water. It asks for one and a half cups of warm water and by warm water they mean 105 degrees Fahrenheit to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't have a water thermometer. I'm going to try to use my meat thermometer. I don't know if it's going to work or not. I might have to get a water thermometer for a little bit better cooking. But I'm going to pour this into here. and I'm going to warm this water. Actually, now that I think about it, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to fill this up above two and a half, uh, two and a half, one and a half cups, warm it up, and then pour out the remainder because water evaporates when it gets hot. So this is all going to be about trial and error, guys. I mean, it's something that I've never done before, so I figure you can learn right along with me. So I'm going to warm this up, and we will be back. All right, so the next step, it says dissolve yeast in warm water. Warm water is one and a half cups of warm water, 105 to 115 degrees. 
I do have a little bit too much water in here, so I'm going to dump some of it out. There we go. There is one and a half cups of water. So I'm going to pour my water into here. I use my meat thermometer to measure the temperature, and it says 107 degrees, so it's right in the middle of the two. So dissolved yeast. I'm using, uh, just so you know, for sushi man's active dry yeast. Uh, it says use two of the packets of active dry yeast. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, what's the best way to do this? I'm going to kind of hit it so it hits to the bottom. I'm going to do it over the package so that it gets into here. I'm going to pour all of the packet number one. Just make sure it, it all gets in there because the yeast is the part of the ingredient that actually makes the, the bread go. And it actually has a pretty interesting smell. I didn't realize that yeast actually had a smell. So that's kind of a cool thing that I just learned. And again, I'm going to hit this down so I don't miss any. And then again, hit the top of this and pour the yeast into this bowl. It's almost like a cornmeal. It's hard to explain what the consistency of yeast is. This is the first time I've ever worked with it. So definitely a learning experience. So I use two full packets of yeast, dissolve yeast in warm water and loop, uh, add lukewarm mix mixture. So before I do that, I do want to stir this just to get a little bit of the yeast dissolved. I'm going to pour, stir it into here because it says, it does say to dissolve it. So I'm going to stir this for a little bit while I'm waiting for my other mixture to become more lukewarm. It's very close. Uh, so we're gonna stir this. It looks like it's dissolving very nicely. If you guys wanna see a little bit better look of what it looks like, it almost looks brown. So that's pretty dissolved. Again, this is all kind of based on just me looking at this. I really, <laughs> to be honest, have no idea what I'm doing. But I'm following the instructions, I'm reading them, I'm trying to be as precise as possible. So it looks like it's pretty dissolved. There are a few blotches. I did wash my hands before doing this, so I would recommend doing the same thing if you're going to cook. So it's very, very close to being done. I'm going to grab my other mixture. And I'm going to read this just one more time to make sure. Dissolve yeast in warm water, which I just did, in warmed mixer bowl. Ah, the mixer bowl was not warmed. But with the water being warm, I think I'll be okay, I hope. If not, I can always change that next time. Uh, oh, I guess it was warm because I put the water in here for a little bit. Add lukewarm mixture, milk temperature, and this is definitely lukewarm now. So I'm going to add that. So that's in there. I'm going to stir that for a minute or two. Not really a minute, but just a couple quick stirs just to let the yeast dissolve as well. And now I'm going to use King Arthur flour, unbleached bread flour. I'm a huge Camelot fan. I don't know if anybody knew that or not, but um, it is something that was one of my old obsessions. So this is one cup. It's going to ask for four and a half cups. So I have my one cup and I have my half cup from before with the milk. So I'm going to quickly rinse this out. And again, I'm going to use the same kind of method that I used before. I'm going to use the, the edge of this to get the butter or the flour mixed. I'm going to pull this here. And again, I'm going to try to be as clean as, po Whoa! as possible. This is the first time I've ever really worked with these materials. So again, this is definitely a learning experience for me. But I'm going to do go like this, go like that. And it wants four cups. So there's one, there's two, I might not have enough in here. I have more of them, so it's not a problem. Yeah, I'm going to have to go into the actual flour. What I'll do is I'll fill this up a little bit more. I 
here we go. A little bit more flour. You can probably never have too much flour when it comes to actually baking because you need it. So again, here is number three. I really hope that was number three. I'm going to have to watch the video before I actually go all the way. And there's four. It does want a half. We're going to go to the half one, which is right here. So there is my half. So. I'm going to do a quick peek just to make sure I have a, the proper amount of flour in here and I will be right back with iMovie Magic. As you guys knew before me, I did have four and a half cups, so that's definitely not a bad thing. It says dissolve yeast in warm water, add a lukewarm mixture, attach bowl and dough hooker to mixer, turn speed. So guess what? I was supposed to put all of this into my kitchen aid mixer. So hopefully I can transfer this without a problem. I'm going to lift up my kitchen aid mixer, grab my bowl. Again, totally, totally, totally a process that we're going to learn to do together. So very slowly and carefully, I'm going to pour this into here. Try to get as much as the mixture as possible. Some of it's actually already becoming kind of doughy. The second time I do this, it's probably going to come out much, much better because I'm not going to lose all this extra ingredient that I'm losing right now. But hopefully, Lord willing, the creek don't rise, this is going to be okay. So I got most of the ingredient into there where it's supposed to be. The next time you see this will be next to the KitchenAid. All right, so now you guys can see I do have my claw mix on and it says, just to be one last time, Add lukewarm milk mixture, blah, 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 attach bowl and dough hook. I do have the dough hook on here. Uh, dough hook to mixer, turn to speed two and mix about one minute. So I have my iPhone. I'm going to go over to the timer and again, it wants me to do one minute. So I'm going to start my timer for one minute and I'm going to put this on number two. I am so sorry about that cut off my battery just or my uh, memory card just ran out, but I did all I did was put it on for one minute on speed two, and then it says, uh, continue on speed two, adding remaining flour, half a cup at a time, and mix the dough clings to a hook and clean side of bowl. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring my flour over here and I'm gonna be adding that. So right now I have four and a half cups of flour. I need five to six. So I guess I'm gonna do in between five to six, so that, that sounds good. So I need to do half a cup at a time, continuing on speed two. So I'm going to get my other half a cup. I'm going to turn this back on to mixture two. One, two. I'm just going to get this. I would not recommend doing this at home. So it says, yep. And I'm going to want to do about two minutes again, it's saying. So I'm going to get my timer going for two minutes. I'm going to put my second cup, half a cup in. So now we're on five and a half cups. I am going to do a little bit more. Just because it does say kind of in between those two. And I did lose a little bit of flour. So it says, continue on speed to adding remaining flour, mix until dough clings to hook and cleans on sides for about two minutes. Knead on speed two, about two minutes longer or until dough is smooth and elastic. Dough will be slightly sticky to the touch. I'm gonna turn it off for just a second and push it down just to help this along the way just a little bit. 
because it is coming up here. And from what I was reading online, that's definitely not a good thing. So I'm going to give it just a little bit of help. I'm going to lock that back into place and go back to number two. That's a good thing. So I think it's done now because it's actually totally not touching the sides. So if I lift this up, you can see that it's fully stuck here, which is pretty much everything that I've seen on videos. So it says, blah, 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 about two minutes kneading on speed two, about two minutes longer, or until the dough is smoothly and exact. The dough will be slightly sticky, which it's not really slightly sticky, but I guess it's kind of sticky. I might have done it for a little too long. It is something that I will learn as time goes on. All right, dough will be slightly sticky to touch. Plate dough in greased bowl, turning to grease top. And I am going to spray it with Spam, Pam. Lift this up and over. Now, I am going to put a little bit of flour. It didn't tell me to do this, but I've just seen other people do this before, so I, I think that it's a good idea. I'm going to get all of this out of here. Totally clean, which is never a bad idea. And there's my first dough ever made. I'm going to kind of just get this more in a regular shape. I think I'm doing this right. From what I was reading, it wanted me to uh, put it kind of like trifold. So right now what I'm kind of doing is I'm just making it try to be more, look like an actual, I don't know, normal thing. It is a little sticky. You know what? I might have done this right. I just, I've never done it. So I don't even know if I'm doing it right or not, which is kind of funny. But we have my dough. Trying to make it as smooth as possible just because you never want bread to look bad. Why would you want it to look bad? So, what it wants me to do, if I read the instructions one last time, place dough in a grease bowl, turning to grease top. Cover, let rise in warm place, free of draft for about one hour or until doubled in bulk. So, we have my bread. There's the top. There's the bottom. I'm gonna place it into here. And I'm gonna spray the top because that's what I also read online that was pretty normal so that it's easy to get out. Just a quick spray. And then I'm gonna place this over top of it because that's what I heard to do. And I'm going to start my iPhone timer, which has flour on it, for one hour. So, with iMovie Magic, we'll be back in exactly an hour. Alright guys, it's been one hour, and as you can see, it's popping up. I'm about to lift this off. I literally cannot believe that my bread rose. I thought for some reason it wouldn't. So, as you can see, there's my bread totally popped open. It actually worked, well, as far as I can tell. So now the next, step, st next steps of the instruction says punch dough down and divide in half. Shape each half into a loaf as directed in page 66. It tells me to use a rolling pin, but I'm just going to try to shape it with my hands because that's a lot of websites are telling me to do. And uh, place in greased pans. It says 8.5 by 4.5 by 2.5. I'm using 9.5 uh, by 5.5 by 7.5, so they're not exactly perfect, but it'll definitely work. It's not going to be a bad thing to have them in this size. So, as you can see, we are about to punch this down. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, just to give you guys a little bit better view. I'm going to move this up, and as you can see, I'm going to punch this down. Very, very, very interesting feel. I've never actually done this before, but we're going to punch this down. It's almost like too much but luckily this is coming out extremely easily so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out I'm gonna grab some flour put some flour around I'll of course clean this later I'll also get my hands a little bit of flour 
I did again wash my hands before this. So, from what I was reading online, you basically take the bread and just keep folding it within its side. And just kind of punching out all of the air bubbles. Kind of letting it into itself. Definitely an interesting feeling. I've never actually done this before. So now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of putting it in, making almost like a jellyfish is what a lot of websites told me to do. So I'm kind of doing that. Getting it so it's kind of one big loaf. You know, I'm actually thinking I might eat some of my bread tonight. This is pretty exciting stuff. So again, it, it's making almost like a membrane under here. It's hard to actually get it this part to stay together. And again, I, I, I might totally be doing this wrong. I, I really don't know what I'm doing. This is my first time trying. But this sure does look about an even circle. So I'm going to take this knife. And I've seen things that are actually like this thing you just go Chk! So I might buy one of those. But I'm going to try to make this as close as possible when it comes to cutting. I'm also probably going to get myself a scale, but these are very, very, very similar in size as you can see. They're almost perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double tap this one more time with a little bit of flour. And I'm going to do basically the same thing that I just did. And I'm going to try to make myself a loaf. I'm just going to kind of go in on itself once. Oops, that was kind of loud. And now I'm going to basically just make it pat it down to make sure that there's no air bubbles. Fold it in and on itself just so that it stays in a, a nice bread shape. that one there and do the same thing with this again pushing it down just to make sure that there's no problems with air pockets and then I'm going to fold it into itself pop it over this way very very similar size it's going to make two very nice loaves of bread I'm pretty excited about it actually so here are our two pans what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a tad bit of uh, the spray. I'm going to coat the pan. And then I'm going to read just to make sure I do this right. Punch dough down and divide in half. Shape each half into a loaf. Cover or place them into the pans. There we go, I have both of my pans in here. I also should spray the tops of these. Um, cover, let rise in warm place, free of draft for about another hour. So, I'm gonna put them back over. Uh, another tip that I learned from a guy that I saw on a web, uh, website, I'm gonna dampen this cloth so that way, when they rise, if I pull this off, it's not gonna rip the bread. It didn't rip it last time, but why chance it? So I'm gonna damp this cloth real quick. Get it kind of damp. I mean, not so much that it's going to drip onto it, but the cloth is now damp, and I'm going to put it just over top like this, and I'm going to wait myself another hour, and then we'll come back in, and it'll be time to throw this into the oven. So probably in about 45 minutes from now, I'm going to start preheating my oven. It wants it heated at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes. So. I'm going to do that, and again, another uh, trick that I learned, I'm going to tell you guys when I come back. So in one hour from now, hopefully this will be risen, and we'll be able to pop them in the oven. Alright guys, it has been another hour. I am going to be lifting up my two bread pans, bringing them over here. My towel is still just a tad damp. I'm going to be moving them just so that it's more centered. Lift this up just to be safe, and lo and behold, there are two loaves of bread. Now I, of course, have to still put it in the oven. I've had the oven preheating for about 15 minutes now. I'm 
probably going to give it another five minutes before I put it in the oven, but I will show you me putting into the oven and the instructions say to bake the product for about 30 minutes or until golden brown. Uh, bake it at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and again, I'll put this into there in about five minutes from now just to make sure that the temperature is just right and I'll show you me putting this in and then of course taking it out. All right guys, it's only been about two and a half minutes or so, but I think everything looks good. I'm going to lift this up and try to get these in as quickly as possible. That way we don't lose any heat while this is open. I'm going to put both loaves of bread in the pan, in the oven. Make sure there's nothing on the bottom. There's a little sticker on here, but hopefully that should be okay. And I'm going to, again, set my iPhone alarm for 30 minutes. Should not be a problem at all. Um, I'm going to be taking the bread out in 30 minutes and hopefully everything looks good. So we have our last countdown. After this, the bread only, I believe, has to just sit out for a little bit and cool off and then it'll be ready for eating and hopefully it'll be some good eats. I know you can't smell this, but it's been about 20 minutes and I just came in just to not open it because I know that hurts when you're actually cooking because it lets the heat out, but it smells really, really good in here. So I'm pretty excited. In 9 minutes and 53 seconds, I'll be opening this up, and hopefully we'll have some golden brown bread. Oh, it really does smell good. I wish Karen was here so that she could smell it. The next time I cook, I definitely want her to be here because this is honestly two and a half to three hours in the making, you know, from actual physical touching this. And it's pretty amazing when you sit there and realize that you're going to have a loaf of bread that you personally made. I mean, this, you know, granted I used the KitchenAid to, to, to stir it, but... It's something that I'm pretty proud of and hopefully it turns out really good. All right guys, it has been just about 30 minutes. I'm gonna be opening this up for the first time. I haven't opened it yet because I didn't wanna let the heat out. Uh, it should be golden brown and hopefully everything will be good to go when I open this and we can let them cool, but let's open this up. They sure do look golden brown. This is amazing. I just have to try to get this out. I'm gonna to switch to uh, an easier tool to use. I don't wanna burn myself. Actually, gonna grab double sides so that. So as you can see, uh, they are definitely golden brown. I am gonna set this on top of my stove for now and grab the second one. They do look very, 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 very similar. I hope this is coming out good. I am gonna, of course, readjust the camera once I shut this. So it is a very hot day. If it wasn't, if it was cold, you could kind of leave this open just to heat your temp your. Uh, house or you know apartment but I'm turning this off and I'm going to change back with iMovie Magic so you can see these cooling. All right as you can see I do have them on this cooling rack that I got from Bed Bath & Beyond today and just to read the last part it says bake at 400 degrees Fahrenheit until golden brown as you can see they are golden brown about 30 minutes remove from pans immediately and cool on wire rack. Now I heard you shouldn't remove from the pan immediately because it will rip so I am going to give this about 20 minutes or so just to cool down and then I will remove it. But here's a few tricks to know that it's ready. Oh, it's hard to hear that, but it will, it will sound hollow when you hit it. Definitely hot, so you don't want to burn yourself. But uh, I'm going to let this cool for about 20 minutes and then I will pop them out and cut into one just to see what the insides look like and maybe even try a piece. All right, guys, these have been cooling for about 17 minutes, and to be honest, I don't know exactly how long I should have let them stay cooling, but obviously I'm going to let it cool just a little bit longer once I get them out of the pan. Uh, they're not super hot, but wow, I'm really surprised how easily it popped out. So, this is my loaf of bread, loaf number one. Just to show you guys, it actually came out really, really good. It's warm to the touch right now, but that's my very first piece of bread and let's do my second and again pop right out that cooking oil definitely helped and just to show it to you again <laughs> very 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 surprising i'm gonna let these cool for probably another five minutes and then i will unplug i will cut one open just so you can see the insides all right guys our bread has been cooling for, i would say for approximately 25 minutes or so total a little bit out of the pan a little bit in the pan uh, as you can see i have some aluminum foil it's just me and karen that live here so i'm going to move this up and i'm actually whoa i didn't realize my aluminum foil looked like this it's a little bit harder to use than you would think uh, might have had a little bit of a problem with this at some point but it's okay 
I'm going to take the smaller of the two loaves and actually wrap it in aluminum foil so that way hopefully this bread stays a little bit longer than uh, normal. So uh, if you have any suggestions on how to keep bread longer, definitely let me know. But for now, I think that this is a great way for me to have this piece of bread that I just made. Look at the texture on that. It really is a nice loaf. I'm, I'm really surprised. So, like I said, I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in on itself, lift this up, lift this up, and then fold down and up. And again, hopefully, this is going to last. Another thing that I read was putting it into a uh, Wegmans bag or, well, just a grocery bag. Probably don't have Wegmans from here from unless you're around here. Uh, definitely helps to keep as well. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into a Wegmans bag with as little as air as possible, tie this, and hopefully when I open this up in a few days to eat bread, it'll be available. I'm not, I, I don't know if I should put it in the fridge, the fridge or freezer or not, but um, I'm going to do a little bit more research on that and find that out. For now, I'm just going to set it over by my KitchenAid and I'm going to grab my cutting board and set this loaf of bread, which again, one of my very first loaves. Cannot believe how well this came out. This is still warm to the touch. I wouldn't say that it's hot, um, but it's definitely starting to be a little softer than when I first took it out of the oven. So, without further ado, I'm gonna cut this into this, and again, this is something that I, I've never done before, but I'm hoping with time, I get better at it. There we go. So, as you can see, this is one of the first pieces. I'm going to cut an actual piece because I'm not a huge, huge fan of the butt. Not that I'm going to throw that away, but let's cut myself an actual slice. And again, they might make better nice for this, but here is my first piece of bread. It is a little whiter than it looks on camera, but it does have definitely a yellow feel. It's very warm, not super warm, I guess that's the wrong word, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of light butter uh, with canola oil because What's better than having just basic bread? Oh, that's way too much. I normally would put that much on, but I don't think it's going to need it because it's just that nice of a bread. Put a little bit of butter on there. And uh, I'm going to try this piece of bread. Very first time. Here we go. All right, guys. I started this process at about 2.30, and it is now 6.35. So about 3, 3, 4, 3, 5, 4 hours later, I have a piece of bread in my hand that's ready to be eaten. I did lightly butter it, but it has a nice, hard, thick crust. So here we go. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm. It's really good. Tastes like breaded butter. Um, again, very basic white bread. Would be good for sandwiches, whether peanut butter and jelly, or making a little bit fancier with some meats. But it tastes better than bread you would buy at Wegmans, just basic simple bread. You can see some of the textures. A really nice fluffy bread. I'm actually really surprised that it came out this good. I hope that Karen tries it when she gets home and this still is good. I'm probably also going to Put this in an area to keep it safe and hopefully my other bread will come back. Uh, my next adventure into breads, I think I'm going to try to make my own sourdough starter. It's something that you have to create before you can actually make the bread. If you know about breads, you probably know about sourdoughs. It's something that's called a mother that you have to create and then it, you can continue to use it for a really long time. But I just wanted to say 
If you made it this far, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm guessing most of my subscribers will not watch this, but uh, my brother Jonathan, my uncle Ray, I'm sure my fiance, maybe my dad, probably not my dad, but people will definitely watch it. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. This is really, really good. If you've never made bread before, you don't have to have a KitchenAid. And some people would say that true bread makers wouldn't use a KitchenAid, they would need it all by hand. But for my first try, this came out really good. Until next time, this is Eye Addiction. Signing out.